Jardin. Spanish word for garden? No. Spanish word for preschool. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to another beautiful day here in Chile. Look at the sky, it's so incredibly beautiful. But today we're talking about, well, it's kind of a, a touchy subject because people get really excited about it on this end, and people are like, mm, I agree on this end. So we're gonna talk about a touchy subject, but if you haven't checked out my last couple of videos about things that I wish I had known before coming here to Chile, make sure you go check those out. I'll leave a, a link right in the description. When you're done with this video, go check that one out. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and uh, hit that little bell button and uh, be notified for any new videos that come along. And like this video, because today, we're talking about something near and dear to my heart, and that is uh, the school system. You see, I grew up as a, a teacher's son. My mom is a teacher, my dad is an engineer. I grew up and wanted to be a teacher because I had such a good role model for a teacher when I was in school that I wanted to be a teacher too. Studied to be a teacher, was a teacher in the States, was a teacher in the Dominican Republic, and then I came here to Chile and was a teacher here. The differences between the countries is pretty drastic. So, let's dive into that today. So I feel like the best place to start when we're talking about schools is to start outside of the school. What does it look like? When you come into a school here in, in Linares at least, it looks pretty much like, like this. The schools in the campo, pretty much the same. There's a fence on the outside that looks like this and a bigger fence that looks like that. And the kids go through there when it's open and this is partly for protection. In the States, we typically, I mean, not all the places, but typically we don't really have a fence to go into the school. You can just drive up and then if the door is open, you just open it and go in. The other part is, uh, for me, it's different. If you didn't see my last video about the weather, go check that one out because it's different in the northern parts of the United States than the southern parts. In that, the southern parts the schools can be wide open. When I taught in the Dominican Republic, it was this way as well, because the temperatures are nice. Here too, the school is wide open. The gym is open, the classrooms, you walk between classrooms in the outdoors. Whereas where I'm from in the north, in the winter time, when school is in session, it would be way too cold to do something like that. You would freeze going from class to class. Here, I think in the winter time too, you freeze, but also, I think uh, there's not as much, actually there's like never snow, at least here in Linares. So you don't have to worry about that. Whereas in the northern parts of the United States, there's snow and going in between classes would be like going through mounds of snow and then op trying to open the door through a mound of snow. And uh, it could get uh, a little bit crazy. But uh, this is probably the first thing that I noticed was that it's a open school in that it's not completely closed off wherever you go, which was uh, a little different for me. And I think I, I prefer this way better because you get to go outside a little bit between classes. In the States, it's just, I mean, not in all of the States, in the northern parts of the States, it's just so cold in the wintertime. Sometimes you get to go outside, but sometimes it's too cold. The teachers don't let you go outside because the wind chill is that cold. Okay. Next difference. Please, please, please subscribe. Just hit that red button right below. Hit the like button as well. And uh, if you want to be notified of future videos from uh, this gringo, make sure you hit the bell button. All right, back to the video. Okay, so now that we've talked about the outside of the school, we can finally go inside. And maybe not technically inside because it's uh, pretty well locked. I mean, most of the time it's pretty well locked now, but 
Inside of the school is much different than what you'd find in the United States. For instance, this is a high school. I used to teach at this high school here in Linares. And typically in high schools in the United States, between classes you go and pick up your new books because you go to a new classroom. But from my experiences here in teaching in different schools, you stay in your own classroom and there are no lockers. So in the States, maybe you've seen it in movies, there are lockers, so you go and put your books in the locker and then you go to your next class, you drop off your books and all of that throughout the day. And then you have a backpack and you go with you wherever you go. Here, typically, there are no lockers anywhere to be found in any of the schools that I've ever taught at. And it's perfectly fine, it's just a difference that I've seen here. Besides being freezing in each classroom, um, there's also uh, there's also no no lockers. Besides that, I feel like the structure inside of the school is a little bit different as well. In that, typically in the states you have a principal, which you have here too. They call them directors here, and then you have a dean that's under it that handles typically the discipline in the schools. But I don't feel like it's quite the same here. Here there are inspectors. So kind of like uh, Inspector Gadget? No. Inspectors are people that walk around the halls, make sure that the discipline of the kids are good and all that kind of thing. Kind of like a dean, but just a little bit different. And a dean in the States too, they would do like things that were really exciting for the kids to motivate them. Like uh, at the beginning of a week in the school that I, I taught at last in the United States, we would have deans that once a week there would be like this big thing, this big event. And if you were good enough basically during the week, you could attend this event. Or maybe once a month they would throw this big event. And those kids that uh, were good throughout the month, they would be able to go. Kind of sounds like uh, Santa Claus. If you were good, you get gifts. It's not like that, but it's an incentive for the kids to be good during the week. I feel like those are like the biggest differences that I've seen inside of the schools besides, uh, besides eating. Eating is a big deal here in Chile. In the States, I really didn't have very much time to eat because there wasn't a designated time that I had to go to a place to go and eat. Whereas here, I, uh, I had that time where you go and you eat your breakfast and you eat your lunch. That is your time. In fact, the lunch time isn't paid for. And a lot of times too in the States that lunch time isn't paid for here either. So you take your time, you eat your food and you better not bring a sandwich. You better bring like a full out lunch for yourself to eat. Like warm it up in a microwave at least or order something. It's, uh, it's a big deal. Also breakfast, you have to have something like a, a tea or a coffee and then maybe some, uh, I don't know, healthy cookies or uh, sometimes in the campo they'll actually make some eggs and you'll sit around and everybody has a little bit of egg and some marraqueta together and it's a beautiful thing. So uh, just depends on the school and where you're at. Santiago too, never taught in Santiago, but leave it in the comments how all of these experiences might be different than what you might find in Santiago. I love to hear the differences between Santiago, which is a totally different place to live, and then what I kind of grew up with, which was in the United States and then south of Santiago here in Linares and in the Campo area. Let me know what you think. And once you actually get into the classroom, it's a little different as well. And I think the biggest thing that's different is probably the use of uniforms. I mean, even the female teachers wear uniforms here. Whereas in the United States, the guys wear a shirt and tie, which is the same here. And then the girls wear just something nice. And the students in many schools can wear whatever they want. Now this is always a discussion. When I was studying in university to be a teacher, they talked about this. Which is better, to wear uniforms and have kids not worry about what they have to wear or give them the choice and have them be comfortable in what they wear. Age old debate, always out there. Here in Chile, not out there at all because you just wear uniforms. And some kids did write papers about how they shouldn't wear uniforms and things, but I think they're always just going to wear uniforms. Are there any schools here in Chile and let me know in the comments below that actually don't wear any uniforms. 
I don't think they exist, but maybe they do. I don't know. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video for today. If you did, please give it a big old thumbs up. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All of those links are, are right below. And uh, we'll see you guys next time for another adventure as we compare different things between the United States culture and Chile culture, which uh, there are quite a few. I think this series might, might last a while. So subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. But for now, ciao, scout.